On this edition of EDR Tech, we're going to be going over the Bosch CDR900 vehicle interface. The CDR900 was introduced in 2018 and there's still some confusion as to why an additional VCI was added to the Bosch CDR tool. We also get a lot of questions about the initial setup and registration process and how to perform a firmware update. We'll address these topics so you have a better understanding of the CDR900 and what it means for the future evolution of the Bosch CDR tool. So to answer the question as to why the CDR900 was developed, you need to have an understanding of its predecessor, the CanPlus interface module. Now although the CanPlus module has proven to be a reliable interface, it's realistically 20 plus year old technology. Cars have become computers on wheels, advanced high-speed communication between multiple sensors and vehicle systems have been developed by the auto manufacturers. The CanPlus module just couldn't facilitate communication with these systems moving forward. Therefore, Bosch had to develop a new interface, hence the CDR900. Now the CanPlus module is not obsolete. It's still required to perform EDR data downloads from many vehicles. Any new supported ECUs that are added to the Bosch system by any of the auto manufacturers are exclusive to and require the CDR900 to perform a download. Bosch is working on merging much of the existing CAN Plus coverage to the CDR900 platform as well. In essence, as it stands today, you need both the CAN Plus and the CDR900 for full CDR download capability. Now this could change in the future as Bosch adapts the CDR tool to facilitate EDR download capability that is ultimately dictated by the auto manufacturers. For new CDR users, the CDR Pro Toolkit contains both the CAN Plus and CDR900 interface modules as well as related connection hardware for DLC downloads. For existing CDR users that already have the CAN Plus equipment, the CDR900 is sold as an upgrade kit. And that's what we're going to focus on today. However, everything in the CDR900 upgrade kit is contained in the CDR Pro kit as well, so all of this is applicable in either case. One thing of note, the CDR software program supports both the CAN Plus and the CDR900 interface modules. Two interfaces, one software program. The vehicle cable lookup section of the CDR software help file will indicate which interface is required to download data from a specific vehicle or ECU. In Edition 5 of EDR Tech, we go over the Vehicle Cable Lookup section in detail, so you can check that out. So let's take a look at what's included with the CDR900 Upgrade Kit. The primary component is the CDR900 VCI, of course. It also includes a USB cable to connect the CDR900 to your computer. A pair of wireless dongles are also included that can be used in place of the hardwire USB connection between the CDR900 and your PC, and this is an optional feature that we'll talk a little bit more about a little later on. The upgrade kit also includes the main interface power cable. This is used to connect the CDR900 to any cables and adapters used to download data from a supported vehicle or ECU, and is also used to provide 12 volt power to the CDR900. The kit comes with an extension cable that can be used to extend the length of the main interface power cable if needed. It also includes the CDR900 DLC cable. This is used to connect the CDR900 to a vehicle's OBD port to perform a DLC download. And lastly, it comes with a legacy cable adapter, which allows older CAM Plus style direct module cables to be used with the CDR900 if called for in the CDR software help file. Crash Data Group also offers an optional hard shell carrying case that has cutouts specifically for the CDR900 and for the CAM Plus interface module. There are pockets and trays to hold all the various connection cables and adapters as well. The CDR900 is not quite as plug and play as the CAM Plus module. It's a more advanced device and now is probably a good time to go over the ports, indicator lights and buttons. There are three buttons on the front of the device. The center button is the power on off button, which will remain illuminated when powered on. The F1 and F2 buttons are currently not used for CDR functions. There are four LED indicators on the device. The power on self test indicator will illuminate green when power is applied and the self test is running. It will remain illuminated after the self test passes. An audible beep sound will be emitted indicating that the self test has passed and the CDR900 is ready for use. The vehicle communication indicator will flash green when the CDR900 is communicating with a vehicle or supported ECU. This indicator will turn red if the CDR900 loses 12 volt power. 
The error indicator will illuminate red if the CDR900 needs to be initially programmed or it indicates an internal error within the device. The PC communication indicator will flash green when the device is communicating with your computer, whether it be through the USB cable or wireless communication. The top center port is used to connect the main interface power cable. There are two USB ports on the top of the device that are not used for CDR functions. There are additional ports on the bottom of the device. The USB-B port is used to connect the CDR900 to your computer. The Ethernet or LAN port is not used for CDR functions. The bottom rubber boot is removable and exposes additional ports. The USB-A port here is used to install one of the wireless dongles if you utilize the wireless communication feature. The micro SD card slot is not used for CDR functions. Okay, let's go over the initial programming and registration process that must be performed prior to using the CDR900. Before we get into that, let me mention this. Unlike the CAN Plus module, the CDR900 needs to be recognized as a network device whenever it is connected to your computer. Some companies or agencies' IT departments configure their computers to not allow this for various network security reasons. These settings, as well as the use of a virtual private network, or VPN, may prevent your computer from being able to communicate with the CDR900. If this is the case, you or your IT department may need to work with Bosch CDR technical support to identify the issue and have you make the necessary changes to some Windows settings on your computer. So back to the initial programming and registration. First off, you'll need the latest version of the CDR software program installed and activated on your computer. Step-by-step -step instructions are contained in the CDR software help file. Open the CDR software program, click on the Setup tab, hover over Register CDR900 device, and click on How to Set Up and Register CDR900. From here you'll see a link to download the CDR900 user guide. If you're like me and like a hard copy instruction manual, this guide contains all of the instructions for programming, registering, and operating the CDR900. So that's available if you'd like. So here you'll find step-by-step -step instructions on the initial programming and registration of the CDR900, as well as how to set up the optional wireless communication feature. To begin the initial programming, connect the CDR900 to your computer using the USB cable. The CDR900 receives some power through the USB cable. The power on self-test indicator will illuminate, as will the error indicator, indicating the device needs to be initially programmed. Although the CDR900 receives some power from the USB connection, no CDR functions, including programming, can be performed without providing 12 volt power through the main interface power cable. This can be facilitated either by connecting to a vehicle's OBD DLC port, or by connecting the CDR power supply to the power socket on the main interface power cable. So connect the power supply to the socket on the main interface power cable. The amber LED on the power cable will illuminate. If you haven't yet, launch the CDR software program on your computer. Click on the Setup tab, hover over Program CDR Devices, and click on Program CDR 900. This will open the VCI Manager program. You may need to click on the VCI Manager icon on the taskbar. Click on the CDR900 icon. Then click on the lower left button which should now be labeled Recover. The message VCI Software is out of date will appear. Click on the Start Update button. A warning message not to disconnect the CDR900 during the update process will be displayed and just click on OK. The update process may take up to 10 minutes to complete and you can monitor the progress of the update here. When the update is complete, a message will be displayed indicating the CDR900 will automatically restart and wait until you hear an audible beep sound from the device. Just click on OK. The serial number of your CDR900 should be displayed as connected here. If it's not, click on the CDR900 icon and then on the Connect button. The CDR900 itself is now programmed and ready for use, however, we still need to register the device with the CDR software program on your computer in order to perform any CDR functions. Close the VCI Manager and let's go over the registration process. Leave the CDR900 connected to your computer with the USB cable and have the power supply connected as well. Click on the Setup tab. 
hover over Register CDR900 device and click on Register a device. Confirm you want to register this device and it's that simple. A confirmation message should appear indicating that your device was successfully registered. Click OK. Now you can only have one CDR900 registered to your computer at a time. If you work for a company that shares various CDR900 devices, you may need to unregister a device and register a different one to your computer. And that's done from this same drop-down menu. Your CDR900 is now ready to use to perform CDR900 supported EDR data downloads. At this point, performing a download using the CDR900 is basically the same as with the CanPlus module. Start a new file, enter the required information, and click on the appropriate ECU icon to start the download. Alright, let's go over the optional wireless communication feature. The wireless feature basically takes the place of the hardwire USB connection between the CDR900 and your computer. A physical connection is still required between the CDR900 and a vehicle's OBD port for DLC downloads or directly to an ECU for direct to module downloads. Have your pair of wireless dongles ready to install. You'll need a computer with two USB ports. Use of a multi-port USB hub will not work. Disconnect the power supply and USB cable from the CDR900 and then remove the bottom rubber boot. Install one of the dongles into the center bottom USB port on the CDR900. Either of the two dongles will work just fine. Then replace the rubber boot. Now install the other dongle into an open USB port on your computer. You may have to wait a minute for your computer to configure or recognize the dongle. You may or may not receive a confirmation message that the device has been configured depending on your operating system. Now reconnect the USB cable to the CDR900 and the power supply to the main interface power cable. Next click on the Setup tab. Hover over Program CDR Devices and click on Program CDR900. This should open the VCI Manager. Again, you may have to click on it in the taskbar. Click on the Connect button. Now, unplug the USB cable from the bottom of the CDR900. A pop-up message will appear indicating that the connection between your PC and the VCI has been broken. Click OK. The CDR900 icon should now appear with the wireless symbol. Click on the Connect button. The VCI Manager should now show the connection method as wireless. Close the VCI Manager and you're all set. A couple things of note about using the wireless communication feature. Any programming, firmware updates, and registering of the CDR900 must be performed using the hardwire USB cable. Also, when using the wireless feature, Bosch recommends keeping the distance between the CDR900 and your computer to 30 feet or less for optimal communication. Now let's talk about firmware updates. Firmware updates to the CDR900 are occasionally required. The firmware updates are built into certain versions of the CDR software program and you'll be prompted to perform the update when installing a version of CDR that contains an update. Performing a firmware update is very similar to the initial programming that we covered a few minutes ago. Connect your CDR900 to your computer using the USB cable. Provide 12 volt power to the main interface power cable and launch the CDR software program. Click on the Setup tab. Hover over Program CDR Devices and click on Program CDR900. This will open the VCI Manager program. You may need to click on the VCI Manager icon on the taskbar. Click on Update VCI. A message will appear stating VCI software is out of date. Click on Start Update. A warning message will be displayed to not remove power to the VCI during the update process. Click on OK. The status of the update will be indicated with the progress bars. Now this could take a few minutes. When the update is complete, a message will be displayed indicating the CDR900 will automatically restart and to wait until you hear an audible beep from the device. Click OK. Once you hear the beep, click on the CDR900 icon and then click on Connect. Close the VCI Manager and you're all set. And that's it for this edition of EDR Tech. I hope you now have a better understanding of the CDR900, including the initial setup process and firmware updates, 
Again, once configured, performing a download using the CDR900 is not much different than with the CAM Plus module. There are a couple videos on our YouTube channel that demonstrate how to perform both a DLC download and a direct-to-module download using the CDR900, so check those out. Now, if there's a topic you'd like to see covered in a future edition of EDR Tech, please let us know. Click on the subscribe button and you'll be notified when next month's edition has been posted. And as always, if you have any questions about any of the EDR retrieval tools, Bosch, Hyundai Kia, or Tesla, just give us a call or go to crashdatagroup.com.